Hi, I'm Nick Raines from Leica Camera Australia. The M11 has been released. It has 60 megapixels and I'd like to talk to you about what that really means. If you think back not that many years ago, 60 megapixels was the complete preserve of the medium format digital cameras. Um, even the original Leica S2 was only 37.5 megapixels and the current S3 is 64. So we're right up there with medium format resolution in a camera of this size, which is absolutely astonishing. And I think it's fair to say that if you consider the camera and lenses as a package, considering that the camera itself is pretty modest in size, but the lenses, of course, are extremely small, one body and let's say three lenses in a little bag. I don't think there's any other option on the market that gives you the resolution and that size advantage as a single package. So it's quite astonishing. So for, for landscape photographers, this becomes incredibly powerful because you've got that incredible resolution, but you've also got something that's extremely portable. I'm not going to talk about the other features of the camera. That's for other videos down the track, and there'll be plenty of people discussing those pretty much as we speak now um, because the camera's only just been released. I'm just going to focus on the big deal, which is the 60 megapixel sensor. And 60 megapixels is a lot. It's about 9,500 pixels on the longer edge, and it's, it's about 60 calculating in my head, about 60% bigger in a linear dimension than a 24 megapixel camera. 6,000 pixels going to 9,500, so a little bit more than 50%, let's say 55. That means that you can do prints of approximately AO size, which in metric terms uh, is 1,200 millimeters by 800 millimeters, um, which is about 50 inches 44 inches something around that mark I tend to think in millimeters these days but it's easy to calculate it back that's a big print so let me just show you what that looks like in the real world and then we'll talk a little bit more about the practicalities of shooting at 60 megapixels so I'm just going to pop into my house where I have a print hanging on the wall which is about the size that you could do off the M11 this is a 36 by 24 inch print and in metric terms that's 900 high by 600 wide the m11 in comparison would do a print natively without any interpolation at all the size of the actual frame itself which is just over a meter high so no scaling up no trickery straight off the sensor 60 megapixels gives you a print that big I think you'll agree that's a pretty respectable size print and obviously not everybody is going to make prints that big but you could you can also crop parts out of the picture now that's not a compositional thing necessarily it could be but it also means that you can pretty much double the focal length of your lenses effectively in equivalent sense so if you've got let's say the 135 mil lens for the m11 that would become almost a two, 270 millimeter lens because you can crop the middle out of the picture and that gives you the angle of view of the longer focal length lens so it gives you options if you can't quite get close enough you've got so much resolution that you can crop it in and still make let's say an a3 plus print which is very respectable indeed but here's something that i i, I need to to discuss there's two things really one is how does it work with the older lenses you know obviously the higher the resolution the sensor the more quality the lens needs to provide in terms of you know the the, the transmission of the image onto the actual sensor because the sensor will only capture what's projected onto it so how good are the old lenses and also let's talk a bit about hand holding first of all this is the 18 mil super elmar for those of you who've watched my videos before you'll know that's probably one of my favorite lenses of all times it's an old design and no it's not up to the quality of let's say the 28 mil sumilux or the 35 mil apo 50 mil apo lenses which are just you know, off the scale However, at f3.5, yes, it's a little bit soft, but remember, you are looking at that image magnified even more, because if you go to 100% on your screen in, in Lightroom or Photoshop, you are looking further and further into that image. So you're magnifying any defects even more. If you do the same size print with this lens as you might have done using this lens on an M10, let's say A3+, 
you're going to get the same results because the lens is no less sharp. It's only when you start looking further into that file by magnifying it more that you're going to see any problems. F3.5, yes, you can see it's a little softer, but you go to F5.6 or F8, and it's absolutely razor sharp. I was astonished that this lens is absolutely capable of working with a 60 megapixel sensor without any compromise whatsoever. Just have to stop down a little bit. Now with the Apo lenses, um, 28 mm Lux, those lenses that the later design ones, no, you don't. They're absolutely fine, up to 60 megapixels wide open, no question. I've tested it. I've been using this camera for about four months now. I'm very familiar with its idiosyncrasies and no problem whatsoever. The other thing which I'm gonna, we're going to get questions on, and I know there's been commentary in the past, is this idea that if you have a higher resolution sensor such as this, it's really it's impossible to hand hold with it. You've got to use a tripod. So, you know, it's a waste of time. It's simply not the case. You just need to use better technique when you're hand holding. And that means using a higher shutter speed. It's as simple as that. I've handheld this camera as much as I've used it on a tripod. I have zero issues with sharpness, but you've just got to make sure that your hand hold shutter speed limit, the lower limit of shutter speed at which you hand hold is higher than with a lower resolution sensor. So there's an old guide to this, which is you multiply the, um, the focal length of the lens by one in this initially to give the shutter speed. That's 50 mil lens, 60th of a second. That's the old film days. Then more recently, people would be advising to multiply by two so that a 50 mil lens would give you a hundredth of a second, 125th of a second. That would be your lower limit for shutter speeds. But this one times four, I would say. So shooting with a 50 millimeter lens, I'd be trying to use a 200th of a second or higher or 250th or 180th, somewhere around that, depending on how steady your hands are, but you have to ramp it up a little bit. Fortunately, in the auto ISO settings on this camera, you have the option to set that multiple. It can be one, two, or four times the focal length for your auto ISO. So I have this camera on auto ISO quite a lot. I find it very useful. And I have it set to four times the focal length. It's one of the options in the menus. So with this lens, which is an 18 millimeter lens, that's about a 80, 90th of a second it would use as a minimum. Absolutely fine. No problems at all. So you can absolutely handhold this camera, absolutely get the maximum quality out of it. You just need to be a little more careful. Just to give you some examples, this image here, which is Miller Miller Falls in Northern Queensland, this was shot on a tripod. You can tell really because the water is so smooth that it must have been a relatively long shutter speed. This picture is shot handheld. It was just at the side of the road. I pulled up and I just thought there was a photograph here. This is shot with the 35 mil Sumilux at f1.4. And if I zoom in on this one, you'll see just how crisp that eye is when it's been critically focused. Picture like this though, this is the 35 mil Similux again. Uh, this is handheld, um, no problems at all. If I zoom in on that, you'll see that it's absolutely maxed out in terms of image quality. This one is an interesting one. This is a platypus pool at a place called Bunabunu National Park in Northern New South Wales. Um, there's the 18 millimeter shot full frame. And then if I just go right into the shot, you'll see just how sharp that is. This was shot at F8 and again, handheld. I'm standing on tiptoes on, on a bench, just trying to get this angle looking down into infinity. And there's no problems at all with sharpness. So handhold away, no issues. Just make sure your shutter speed is high enough. Overall, without going into any more detail, and I'll have another video coming up in a few weeks, which goes into more detail. This camera is a massive step up from the M10. The M10 was a big step up from the M240, but this is this is an order of magnitude better. And in fact, I would go so far as to say that this is by far best M camera that Leica have ever made.